Dear Felix, thank you very much for invitation. For me, it's a great pleasure to speak to you because uh, you must know I'm not a cardiologist. Um, I'm a simple pediatrician, and I'm only interested in syndromes, especially in williams boron syndrome now for more than 25 years. And I have done no experimental work, only clinical studies. Okay. I start. williams boron syndrome is a multi-system disorder caused by hemicygous deletion of about 1.6 MB on chromosome 7, which contains about 26 to 28 genes. Main clinical features are cardiovascular malformations, primary mental retardation, and a distinctive facial feature. Here you see on the first slide the typical face of a young boy with periorbital fullness. Full cheeks, open mouth and full lips. And flat nasal bridge. And small milk teeth. And in blue eyes you can see typical stellate iris pattern. Perhaps you can see a little bit but not in brown eyes. On the next slide, you'll see the typical face over the years from six months to 46.9. This is a face not of a man, it's a face of a woman. She died aged 64. He had um, mama carcinoma in 2008. It's one of the oldest patients I know. I know one more. It's a man. He was 66 when he died. Spectrum of cardiovascular malformations. In memoriam to Professor Wessel, one slide on cardiovascular malformations in williams boron syndrome he published in 1994. It is an overview of the most important publications, as you can see on our own data, including 218 patients. Supravalvular aortic stenosis occurs in about 70%, and peripheral pulmonic stenosis in about 39%. Normally, it's uh, together supervalvular aortic stenosis and peripheral pulmonic stenosis. Isolated peripheral pulmonic stenosis is very rare in williams boron syndrome, but as you can see, there are a lot of other malformations, aortic hypoplasia, coarctations, ASD ventricular septal defect, not uncommon, and tetralogy of fallow is seen four times, and we have seen one interrupted aortic arch. So in conclusion, there's a wide spectrum of cardiovascular malformations in williams boron syndrome. It's not the original table on the publication. We changed it because 2009, there was a publication of 150 patients, and they had nearly similar data compared to our own. I will say some sentences about milestones of development in patients with williams boron syndrome. Here you see on our own data again 218 patients, the milestones of development, and as you can see, there's a wide range of sitting well between 6 and 48 months, uh, speaking first words, walking alone, and speaking two word sentences. And the mean is always behind the 90th percent of the Denver developmental scale. But as you can see, there are still some children who learn to sit, to speak, and to walk, and to speak two sentences at normal time. 
So in conclusion, you can tell your parents, your child will sit, your child will speak, and your child will walk alone. Speaking two word sentences, and there is a small question mark. I know now two patients with a very severe, um, what is it called, autism, and one is nine years old. Uh, he doesn't speak two word sentences, only several words. And the girl, she's aged six years, she only speaks several words. But normally, uh, all speak very well. In the literature, you know the term cocktail party manner. And what that means, I can tell you anecdotally, what a boy said to me after a medical visit, please excuse, I say it first in German, original. Ich wünsche Ihnen für Ihren weiteren wissenschaftlichen Werdegang alles Gute. <laughs> so simply translated for the future, I wish you successful scientific work. I think he didn't know what he said. <laughs> On the next slide, you see the intelligence quotient of 177 individuals, nearly 50% show mild mental disability with an IQ range between 50 and 69 and is about, and in about 31%, IQ range between 35 and 49, defined as moderate mental disability. In conclusion, 81% of the individuals shown IQ below 70, which means two standard deviations below the means. In the majority, old patients, uh, adult patients, excuse, do not live and work independently. For example, I know only two patients who successfully completed a driving license. On the third sli slide, you see the drawing age in comparison, drawing age in comparison to a chronological age. While the chronological age increases, the drawing age of children increases only insignificantly. As a consequence, this means that only 27.8% of the children display the fine motor and visuomotor abilities which are needed in school learning to write. 81% of children are between nine and 10 years when they are basically able to draw and coordinate their movements in such a way learning to write. I want now to say something about growth and puberty in patients with williams boren syndrome. Here you see on the left side the growth curve of a girl with WBS and early puberty and on the right side for a boy. Statural growth from age of about six months up to nine or ten years follows approximately the third line of no, uh, third percentile of normal. At prepubertal stage, boon age is normally retarded, almost about one year, not seen on the slide. About half a year after the beginning of puberty, Growth spot acceleration of boon age is noticeable. The predicted adult height changes during puberty. In both sexes, the average mean age in girls with early puberty is 10.4. You can see for the girl and the mean difference to the genetical height potential in women is about 10.9 and in men about 9.1. So
also recommendations. X-ray left hand for calculation Boone age starting at six years. And girls routine documentation of pubertal stage starting at six. Precautious and early puberty in girls about 17%. Gastrointestinal symptoms. In infancy, we see very frequently feeding difficulties, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain. In childhood, we see poor eater eat like a bird, very one sided preferences, for example, no meal and no dark bread. But in adulthood, eat with pleasure. You see overweight, obesity in about 41% in women and about 30% in men. No sigmoid diverticulitis in early adulthood, about 8%. Recommendation for nutritional management. For infancy, wait and see. Note anemia due to iron deficiency, not uncommon. Documented hypercalcemia, you always read in the literature, in infancy and childhood is very uncommon. The same is for nephrocalcinosis. In childhood, also wait and see. Note there is a coincidence of WBS and celiac disease, and also alterations in function and morphology of the thyroid is common. And for adulthood, do not enforce rules, you will lose. Lots of meals and reduce total caloric intake, like in prader willi syndrome, and keep in mind, sigmoid diverticulitis, about 8%. Note when recurrent or acute abdominal pain occurs in young adults with WBS, the possibility of diverticulitis should always be considered in the differential diagnosis. The youngest person I know with a severe complication on diverticulitis was uh, 17.5 years old. He had up to now five operations. Behavioral phenotype in patients with Williams syndrome. In childhood, they are characterized as hyperactive, persistent, compulsive, sensitive, empathetic, over friendly, over anxious, clumsy, hypersensitivity to noise, and early onset of musical interest. And in adulthood, we see a more adynamic behavior. They are still persistent and compulsive, still sensitive and empathetic, still over friendly, but usually are not over anxious, still clumsy, partial phonophobia, and still interested in music, playing an instrument, frequently drum set <laughs> and girls keyboard. We also see in adulthood reactive depressive mood and obsessive compulsive behavior. On this picture, you see a girl 18 years old with her hobby. She likes to tear special paper, not to buy everywhere, special paper into small pieces and for her, it is enjoyable leisure time activity, but not for her parents, as you can mention. We know something about the genotype-phenotype correlation in williams boyron syndrome. Oh, excuse. Here you'll see the critical region on chromosome seven, this is a long arm. As I said at the beginning, it's a deletion of about 
6 .6, uh, 1.6 to 1.8 MB, which contains approximately 26 to 28 genes. We know, or we think to know, that the genes for GFT and GFT2, these two ones, haploinsufficiency, are main genes responsible for the VVS neurological profile. The RFC gene is a reduced efficiency of DNA uh, replication and may lead to growth deficiency and developmental disturbances. LIMCA1 gene, impaired visuomotorical coordination cognition and perhaps hearing loss. We know that hearing loss is very frequently in williams boron syndrome, about 16%. Elastin gene, you know, cardiovascular malformation and also hypertension. And the gene FKBP6 may lead perhaps to male infertility. We know on our own data, endocrinological studies, that uh, females frequently infertile, but males, uh, but uh, women with williams boron syndrome are fertile. Thank you very much for attention.